Hey everybody, Joy here. This is actually Saturday, January 30th, 2020. And the following video is a continuation of a video I called Part 1. And it was called Learning Scan and Cut Part 1 or something like that with me. And I just chopped it off. I just chopped it off right here. <laughs> where you'll see me start it in a little bit because it was just it was like over two hours long and it was just too long for those who want to learn to sew for those of you who are new at sewing I want you to see how easy it is and the pattern I'm using to make the turquoise sleeve shirt with the shiny gold glitter that you can't hardly read <laughs> is this pattern I just want to show you it's these two pieces. This is the whole entire pattern. Super, super simple. If you want a sleeve shirt, make it longer. If you want a t-shirt, make it shorter. If you want it fitted, make it skinnier. If you want it lots of ease, make it roomier. It is so easy. If you want a longer sleeve, lengthen it. I have made it, goodness, five, six times recently. So I wanted to show you what company this is. The lady that owns this company is super, super, super nice. Her name is Judy Kessinger. She's a fabulous teacher, a super fun lady, very pretty. And she does all kinds of helpful videos and, and tips and stuff. Okay, we're starting over on the patterns. <laughs> Judy Kessinger owns the Fit Nice System, fitnicesystem.com. She has two patterns. Total complete inventory. Two patterns. One is for, put her at the right side up, Joy. <laughs> one is for pants and one is for tops. And that's it. They're like $35, but you get a lot more than just the pattern. You get lots of helpful tips. You get videos you can look at. You get lots of things you can print out. She tells you how to make things fit. The only thing she doesn't do is she doesn't do bus darts. She doesn't do FBAs and she doesn't do bus darts. I think I'm the only person that even cares whether she does or she doesn't. So, <laughs> that's the only difference, I'll tell you right now. But if you watch me for very long, you can watch me do a bus dart all you want. I've done it a zillion times, okay? So this is her. Here you can see from this top pattern, which you can see what I've, I've done with it, Look at all of these things she made from it. That same exact pattern. She made all of those things from it. And she has a book that probably has over a hundred designs in it. I just love her system for simplicity. I think it's just brilliant and I really like her. I'm not affiliated in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I just appreciate how hard she works. And, um, you know, I really love Glenda Sparling that owns SureFit Designs, too. But that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different thing. This one, you just trace the pattern that's already there. You trace your size. There's no dot to dot or any of that kind of stuff. It's a completely different system. Okay? And I love them both. Alrighty? So, from here on in this video, it's not going to be about the scan and cut. Okay, it started out scan and cut, and then I thought, oh, people are going to ask me how I made that top, and what does it look like when it's all done? <laughs> so, you're going to see me finish the neck in great detail, and you're going to see me how I hem the sleeve in great detail, and I do the hem on the bottom of it the same way as I do the sleeve. Okay, and at the very end, if you're only here to see the sleeve shirt all done, go right to the end of this video, and you will see me acting like a total goof and modeling it for you. Okay? I'm going to shut up and start this video right here. Alright, this is for my beginner sewing friends. This is almost done. I sewed a seam across this shoulder. I sewed a seam across this shoulder. And I sewed a seam from under the arm down to the bottom on both sides. See there? That's it. It's done, except for hands. It is done. This is the easiest, easiest pattern. And yes, you can get the fit good. Do you like the fit of what I'm wearing? Don't answer. <laughs> yes. It has my scan and cut design on it, out of some kind of purple vinyl. 
I'm going crazy. I, you know, this is probably going to itch me. If I get my arms on it at night in bed, it's probably going to itch. It really doesn't, though. It's actually quite soft. I'm amazed for glitter. Okay? This is going to be my new, 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 new nightgown. I just happened to be finishing the neckline. This garment I'm making for a nightgown is this exact same garment. I have made this four times in the last few days. Every single neckline has measured a different measurement. And you have to eat chocolate covered almonds to do it right. Take your neckline and fold it in half. Fold the back in half, fold the front in half, and lay your neckline out like this. Okay? This point right here is this. This point right here is this. So fold it like that. Neckline on top of itself. Match up the shoulder seams. And lay it down as flat and even as you can. Which is just about perfect. No reason it shouldn't be. <clears throat> then you have to have you have to have one of these things. It's called some kind of a curve. A curved ruler, a ruler curve, a, a round ruler, a pizza cutter. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I'll put a link below. All right, but it is very, very nice because you can measure. You roll and you measure. So, you start on zero, you come down to your seam line. The seam line on this garment is one half inch. So you come down one half inch. If you don't know where one half inch is, draw it on there with one of those friction pans. I just know. So I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to roll, and I'm going to come over to this other edge, and it comes out to be 11 and 5 eighths. 11 and 5 eighths. This one was 12 and something. The difference is in the fabric. Some fabrics stretch a lot more than others. This is a cotton. Others might be a nylon. Some might have spandex. They're all different. That's why you have to measure them. And don't stretch it out. Just relax it. Lay it down there. Ouch! And don't put a, don't poke yourself with a pin. I do that because I want my shoulder seams ironed toward the back, and so I pin it so I know which way back is. All right. So measure it ten times if you have to, until you get the same measurement twice. Measure twice, cut once. Now this time it came out to eleven and three eighths. See? It's just the way it is. It's like it's alive. So I'm going to straighten it out a little further down. When you sew, you have to be patient. And you have to fiddle with the fabric from beginning to end of project. You are constantly going to be fiddling with your fabric. Okay? So let's start. This is actually a rounded neckline. I don't know why it looks funny like this, but it always does. All right, we're going to start at zero again. One half inch down. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. All right, that one came up to 11 and 3 eighths again. So, 11 and 3 eighths is just one half of the neckline. See, because we have it folded together. So you have to double that. So, get a piece of paper somewhere. Are you in our Sew Away the Blues Challenge? So away the blues. It ends February 13th. Go to Instagram and check out hashtag joy viv so blues. Blues plural. Check out all the garments over there. They're wonderful. All right, I don't want to write on that. That's too, that's too important. <laughs> I'll write on this. I have no idea what that is. 11 and 3 eighths plus 11 and 3 eighths is 22 and 6 eighths. And everybody knows that 6 eighths is 3 fourths, right? So 22 and 3 fourths. 
is how big around that neckline is. So now we are going to cut a strip of the same fabric across the stretchy part. We're going to cut it one and a half inch. I'm going to cut it one and a half inch wide. I'm not going to cut it 22 and 3 fourths inch long. I'm going to subtract one inch from that measurement. Minus one inch equals 21 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to cut my strip 21 and 3 quarters and then I'm going to sew a half inch seam into it. So that is going to make that shorter by 2 inches. Does that make sense? Let's do it. Pick up your material off the floor. That's where mine always is. I only want on my table what I'm working with. I don't want anything else up here. Alright, so this is the fabric that I was using. This is a piece of it that's left. So, this is the stretchy way. The other way is a stretchy way too, so it really wouldn't matter what way you cut it on this, but I'm going to cut it across the crosswise groove. Slap your ruler down. Now, you don't use this kind of ruler to use a rotary cutter with. No, 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 you will cut yourself. No, 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 you have to use one of these kind of rulers. This one doesn't bend. This one's like an eight quarter inch thick. Okay, so if you're going to learn how to use a rotary cutter, be sure you get the right kind of ruler with it. Now I'm going to cut this deeper than one and a half inches just because I can and I want a straight cut. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut it one and a half inches because I just happen to know that one and a half inches is a good measurement when you have half inch seam lines. Line it up on the one and a half inch line, cut it, then throw away the, the trash, cut off the selvage. This is that kind of uh, knit fabric that rolls in on itself. I hate working with that stuff. I'm hoping it doesn't roll in on my body when I'm in bed at night and strangle me. <laughs> Just a cotton knit. Okay, so here I've got a long piece, one and a half inch, and it's very stretchy. And so what did I say I was going to cut it at? I'm going to cut it at 21 and 3 fourths because the neckline's 22 and 3 fourths. So I'm going to cut an inch off. So I'm going to measure it down here. I'm going to cut it at 21 and 3 fourths which is right there. Now I'm going to go sew it together into a circle. The front and the back look exactly the same so I don't care which is which. I'm not worrying about that. Except they say that it rolls to the front so I'll play like that's the right side. It rolls to the right side. So I'm going to put it together like that and I'm going to sew a half inch seam. This will end up 20 and three quarters inch long. Let's go sew a half inch seam in this. So I sewed a half inch seam and I surged it off. Now of course I ran out of bobbin thread on the machine so I had to go to a different machine. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Just sew a half inch seam in there and surge it off. So let's see how long this ended up turning out to be. My scissors are just awful I tell you. I bet I've got 50 pair of scissors and half of them don't even cut. This measures 20. It measures 20 now. 20 and some. Yeah, it should measure 20 and 3 quarters and it actually does. Now why am I showing you this with my scan and cut video? Because my videos are just about what I happen to be doing and this is what I happen to be doing today and as sure as I don't show you this a whole bunch of you, a whole bunch of you, are going to say, "Would you show us how you finish the neckline?" <laughs> so I'm just going to show you. So what you do is you fold it in half, and you get your marker, your friction marker, not pen marker. The pens are terrible. I highly don't recommend the pens. For one thing, they run out of ink in about five minutes. So mark it at half 
and half and then put those two marks together and mark it half and half again and that way you will end up with quarters quarter marks see there's a quarter there's a quarter there's a quarter that's fuzz and the seam is a quarter I always put the seam in the back Peggy Sager says the seam goes at the side I don't want it at the side there's already a seam at the side I don't want another one there I don't care if every store in the universe puts their seam on the side I'm not putting mine there I'm putting mine in the center back so the next thing you do is you take your nightgown and or your shirt and you do the same thing to it remember how we fold it in half to measure it well now we're going to make some marks at the center back the center front then we're going to take those two marks. I've marked it here and I've marked it here. Now we're going to mark the sides. The sides are not going to be the shoulder seams. Never comes out to the shoulder seam. So be sure you put the center front and the center back together. And then you find over here at the side where it's one quarter mark is. It's at least an inch away from the shoulder seam. Okay, mark that. And now you can surely understand that the quarter marks of the one and a half inch knit band circle that we just made are going to match up to the one quarter marks on the garment. You want to make sure your garment is right side out. Your circle strip goes to the right side of the garment right sides together this is not the only way to finish a neck there's many ways to finish the neck this is one way okay keep that in mind all right now you know i'm going to match up the seam to the center back because there's no seam back there yet and seams are bumpy so i'm going to put the bumpy part in the back Make sure you got your band going straight and it's not twisted. Now I'm matching up the two purple marks in the center front. Now I'm going to do one of the, it's not the shoulder, but it's on the shoulder side. That goes right there. Here is the shoulder where that pin is. This is the quarter mark. Don't ever use the shoulder seam as your quarter, or you will have a very rumply neckline. Now, it's possible that your shoulder seams could end up in the exact quarter mark, but it's never happened to me. But everything's possible. <clears throat> There's a lot of things that happen to me that don't happen to anybody else. <laughs> The band is smaller than the neckline, so you're going to have to pull on the band until it's the same distance as the neckline between those quarter pins. You want it to be smooth. Don't just start pinning it before you pull it straight. Pull it. If it curls, uncurl it. You're the boss of the fabric. You're the boss of the curl. Make it behave. Okay, let's come over to this one. This is number three. Then I'm just going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a half inch seam all the way around the neck. There is a really, really, really good craftsy video on finishing necklines on knits. And the lady's name is Linda Maynard, M-A-Y-N-A-R-D. She does fabulous close-up videos, okay? This is what we've got. See? It's just all pinned together. And you can see right here, 
how the band is smaller than the neck. It's supposed to be. And then you just pull it until they're the same as each other. I'll come back and show it to you after I sew the half inch seam in it. I have sewn one half inch all the way around. That strip, here's the strip. Here's the garment behind it. There you can see my glitter. I've sewn one half inch. Again, this is how Joy does it. There's lots of ways to do this. Some people wrap this stuff around the seam line and sew on the ditch. I fold mine completely to the back. If I was going to wrap it over that seam line, obviously I would have had to use a longer strip. But that just doesn't make your neckline any bigger, and I want mine. And I cut that off just to reduce the bulk. So now I'm going to trim this down to one quarter inch all the way around. I'm going to cut a quarter inch off of this all the way around. And then I'm going to understitch by sewing all the way around and sewing this seam allowance. I'll show you. Why don't you just show us, Jewel? Okay. <laughs> I can't see what you can see. My thing isn't flipped. So what you do is, you get one of these little things that has a quarter inch hump on it. They come in one eighth and one quarter. And I line it up, make sure everything's flat. I line it up. Sometimes I just get tired of doing this and I just do it myself without anything lining it up. <laughs> okay, so lay it down, smooth it out. Lay it down, smooth it out. Line this up. What you want to do is cut a quarter inch off of that half inch seam. Okay, so I have cut a quarter inch off of that half inch seam. See? It's nice and short and nice and even now. So now I am going to sew it to the strip. See here, it's separate. I'm going to go over there and understitch it. I'm going to sew from this side and I'm going to line my foot up with this edge and I'm going to sew right down here and sew this seam to this strip. Okay, I'm using white thread because I ran out of bobbin thread with the turquoise. I've got to change my bobbin. Plus, I thought you could see this better. See? How I sewed the seam, the quarter inch seam, to that one and a half inch, formerly one and a half inch band. So now they are one piece. The seam and the band. Now I'm simply going to fold it to the inside. And this stitch that I just showed you is called understitching. It will cause it to stay turned inside really nice all the way around the neck. Then I am going to sew a top stitch one half inch, one half inch with turquoise thread all the way around. And then I'm going to trim the rest of that strip off. I'll come back when I get that done. Just in case you don't know, there's a fabulous, fabulous product called Steam Seam 2. Light Steam Seam 2. Quarter inch, that's a half inch, just quarter inch, two rolls in here, one roll in here. This is what it looks like. It's an iron on tape. You iron it on to the knit. It's wonderful for knits. Then you can iron that band I put on there, you can iron it down to the inside and it makes it super easy to do the neckline. So I am going to put this steam seam too right here on that seam. Right there. I don't want to put it out here on the edge of the, of the band that I cut. I don't want to put it out there because I'm going to cut that off when I get this sewn in. I'm not cutting it off now because it's a lot easier to work with when it's longer. Easier to work with when it's longer. So, the sticky part is on the other side. I'm ironing it down. It's got a piece of tape, piece of paper here that I'm ironing it with, kind of like the vinyl. So I'm just ironing that down. I'm going to pull that paper off and then I'm going to iron this neckband on there. 
That way it will be super easy to sew with the sewing machine. Kind of weird putting this in a scan and cut video, but... <laughs> oh, I've done this before. I've got videos, but I've got so many new people. I have so many new people. And a lot of you are saying, Oh, I wish I could sew. I wish I could sew. And you can. If you've got a sewing machine, you can sew. If you've got some pins and a measuring tape, you have to have an iron and an ironing board. They don't have to be fancy. Mine are fancy because I'm old. And I've been collecting this stuff over the years. I worked. I worked until I was 68. And I only had one child. Jerry had one child. And they were gone when we were in our 30s. So we've been working all those years. And so now we're playing. <laughs> Why do you have so many machines? Because I would want a new machine because, you know, they always come out with the latest, greatest, newest invention. And I would say, well, okay, I'll trade in my old machine. And so I may have paid $1,200 for my old machine. And they say, oh, we'll give you $200 for it. And I would say, well, that's insane. I might as well keep it. Now, at first, I didn't have places to put them like I do here. I used to just, you know those kind of tables I use at churches for church picnics? I had one of those in a spare bedroom. and I just put a, as many machines as I could. Okay, see, I'm folding that down to the inside, and I'm going to iron that now. I pulled the paper off and I'm going to iron it. I actually use every single one of my machines. I know it's hard to believe, but I do. It's like right now, I was sewing with one of my machines and the bobbin ran out. So I just moved next door to the machine next to it. Didn't have the right color thread, but for what I'm doing, it didn't matter. This isn't going to show. And yes, I sew it with a zigzag. The beauty of a knit is that it stretches. So you should always sew with a thin, long zigzag stitch. Narrow, but like a 3.0. You don't want it too close together. Remember, the band is smaller than the neckline, but that's what we want. See how it's all curling up? That's gonna all be gone, all that curly part. I hate that curly part. <laughs> okay, so that's all ironed down except for maybe right there. Well, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to sew one half inch on the right side all the way around the neck and then I'm going to cut that off. I'll be back. So see how I have cut all of that extra curly part off? I didn't cut it too straight in some places, but that isn't going to matter. Go back and cut it some more if you want to. Just don't cut your shirt. Don't cut your shirt. <laughs> okay, so the neckline is done. It needs to be pressed. But the neckline is done to my new pajamas. So it's 5 o'clock here in Oklahoma. Time to go fix supper. <laughs> but I'll come back up and finish the hems on this after dinner. And then I've got to let it rest for 24 hours, according to Christy. Thank you, Christy. And then I'll wash it and get all this chalk off of it. And then I can wear it to bed tomorrow night. And then, like, if, if the lights go out or something, Jerry can open the blinds and the sunlight can shine on my glitter and he can find me in bed. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Tuesday, <laughs> January 26th, almost 5 o'clock p.m. I have been editing this scan and cut video for hours. Oh, I just cannot stand sitting that long. So I just ended it. I chopped it off. It's too, too long. I showed you how I used my scan and cut and how I used my glitter and how I cut this stuff out and how I was going to put it on my sleep shirt. And it just got too, 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 too long. But at the end of it, I was showing my new seamstresses, who I'm talking to, how I finished sewing the nightgown because a lot of you want to start sewing and I'm telling you it is so, so 
easy. Even to sew with knits, it's easy. So I showed in the video, what I did was I cut off the scan and cut video and I'm putting it all in this video, everything that was left over. So I showed you in this video already how I finished the neck on this nightgown. I already hemmed it off camera, but I hemmed the bottom of it exactly the same as I'm going to show you how to do the sleeve. Okay, so we've got the dolman sleeves. I'm going to put the camera so hopefully you can see really close. Okay, so I'm going to try to make the camera close up so you can watch me hem the sleeve for those of you who are new to sewing. I just want to show you how easy it is and you'll love it. Hopefully you can see. I don't like to get my hands this close to the camera, but pretty much going to have to. Get you one of these. This is called a seam gauge. I probably have 20 or 30 of them. These things love to run away and hide in your sewing room. You have to have a whole bunch of them. And once I get my measurement on it, I put a piece of scotch tape on the back because this little red slide, you need it to stay put and it likes to slide up and down. All right, I have two seams going through this sleeve. One of them goes underneath the arm. One of them is up here on the shoulder. I have put a pin in them to show which way they're pressed. I press the shoulder to the back and I press the underarm to the back. So, you have to know how much you want to turn your hem up. I'm going to turn my hem up 5 8 inch, so that's what I have marked on my gauge, 5 8 inch. Now this is something I do with knits. Repeat after me. <laughs> you cannot do this with woven fabric, but you can do it with knit fabric. Why? Because knits don't ravel. Knits don't ravel, wovens ravel all over the place. So what I'm going to do is mark that 5 8 inch line right there. And then I'm going to get my scissors. Then I'm going to get my little scissors. Make sure you get some scissors that actually cut. I've probably got 50 pair of scissors and probably most of them don't cut. Okay, so you see how I have this little flap cut here now? The reason I do this is because if you leave it like that, then you're putting two seams together one on top of the other and it makes this thick and I have really sensitive skin and that just feel like a rock underneath my arm. So I cut it. You don't have to do this. I just like to. I cut it the width of the hem then I flip it the other direction. Okay? Then I'm going to use this steam a seam. If you're going to sew knits or wovens, paper bags, whatever, buy some of this stuff. It is magic. There are a couple other brands, I think, but this is the best one that I know about because it's lightweight. It's called Steam -a Seam 2 Light. Notice the L-I-T-E. I'll put links below. I have 10 boxes of each of these. One of them's quarter inch wide. One of them's half inch wide. They come on rolls. This is the half inch roll, this is the quarter inch roll. I use miles of this stuff. When do I use the half inch? When do I use the quarter inch? If I have a wide seam, an inch, an inch wide, two inches wide, I'll use the half inch. If I have a narrow seam, like I'm going to put in this, I just use the quarter inch. And the reason you put this glue, this is glue, glue on paper is what it is. You iron it down with the paper on it. Just iron it a little bit. You're not making it permanent yet. You just want a temporary hold right now. This takes a hot iron for a few seconds. Here's the other seam. I'm going to cut it too, just like I did the other one. But the reason you want this is knits are slinky. And they like to move around. And you have to be real careful when you're sewing on them and you're putting the hems in 
But if you'll put the hem in first, you'll see. If you'll put the hem in first with this steamaseam glue, you can sew around it as fast as you can hold that sewing machine foot down on the floor. And it won't move. It won't stretch. It won't wiggle. It won't wobble. It's just wonderful. Now this stuff is stretchy. You won't even know what's there. Once it's melted into your hem, you're not even going to know you put this stuff in it. You can't tell the difference if you put it or if you didn't, except for how difficult it is to sew if it isn't there. So, you saw me iron the tape on. I just held the iron for a second. I'm going to take the paper. See, I'm pulling the paper off. The sticky stuff is still here. See, the sticky stuff is still there. So I have now made the hem an iron up hem. Now if you don't iron it good enough, it, the paper won't come off. Just iron it a little bit more. Now I've heard Judy Kessinger say it sticks without the iron, but I have not used it that way. I always iron it down a little bit. I want to make sure that's going to stay there. Keep a trash can by your sewing machine, keep a trash can by your ironing board, keep a trash can everywhere. <laughs> I'm always throwing something away. All right, so now all you're going to do, now your hem will stay. It'll stick a little bit by itself, and you can pick it up and put it down and pick it up and put it down and pick it up and put it down a million times until you iron it. And even after you iron it, you don't really want to have to pick it up again, but if you had to, you could get it hot with the iron and the glue would come unstuck. Well, it, it would melt again and you could lift it up. I have had to do that before. Now, I'm, I'm picky. You, you all don't have to be as picky as I am. I've seen Angela Wolf take it and hold it, fold it, and pull it like that, and she irons it down. <laughs> I just don't trust myself that much. My goodness, that girl talks fast, sews fast. I thought I was fast until I started watching Angela. Do you know she's a fisherman? A professional? I don't know if you'd call it a professional, I guess. Tournaments? I think they fish tournaments. Yeah, she loves to fish. I like to fish if the fish are biting. Then I like to fish. If the fish aren't biting, let me sew. Until I can get a boat big enough to put a sewing machine on. <laughs> I don't go out much. <laughs> Jerry likes to go by himself anyway. Because then he doesn't have to make me happy. I'm hungry. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, yes. Wives can be such a pain. Especially when you're there, your complete opposite personality. Alrighty. Now you see how that's staying put, even though I haven't ironed it yet. And I do this all the time, and you can see I'm fiddling with it. You probably wouldn't. You'd probably do it like Angela Wolf, pull it <laughs> and sew it down. But I am just such a picky person. Okay, so when you have it like you want it, I should just do this fast and quick so you didn't have to bear with me. Okay, so when you get it, see how it's staying? See how it's staying pretty good all by itself without ironing? And there's a place right here where it doesn't want to hold real good. But it will when you iron it. That's where that double seam is. Right there. So, what we're going to do now is iron it down. Now, this product is called Steam a Seam. So, that is your clue <laughs> that to make this glue permanent, you have to apply steam to it. Now, will it stay if you don't sew it? Maybe. Most of it will. Some of it might not. 
You might take it out of the dryer and find out some of it's come undone. But if you come upstairs, well, wherever, go iron it again. All you have to do is iron it down and it'll go down again. But I always sew mine. See, that's not going to come undone now. I can't arrange it anymore. That's it. And what am I doing it with? I'm using my, what is this called? This is called a sleeve board. A sleeve board. If you are going to sew, you're going to want to buy a sleeve board. And you can see why. When you're doing something small, it won't go around the end of your sewing, your, when you're doing something small that won't go around the nose of your ironing board, you've got to have a baby ironing board. Okay, see that's stuck. It's not going to come loose. All I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine now and I'm going to sew around it just like I did. And I'm going to sew it from the inside. I'm going to line my foot up right next to that edge so I can guide it and I'm just going to sew it down real close to the edge and then here's the right side. This is the hem at the bottom of the garment. I'm going to do the sleeve the exact same way. I'll come back when it's all done and I'll model it for you. All right. Do you see what a nice sleep shirt this makes? Yeah. I have several like it in my closet. <laughs> Sleep shirt, all done. Scan and cut design number four. <laughs> and I'm going to keep on going. It is too, too much fun. <laughs> I like to make some of my own designs, but I'm, I don't know for sure yet if there's a certain way you have to make them so the cutter cuts it out right. I guess I'll have to experiment on that. Lord knows I have enough vinyl. <laughs> it's a whole lot cheaper than a new sewing machine. <laughs> Fit Nice System Dolman Sleeve T. Super, super easy. In order to make it, all you have to have is any t-shirt pattern. <laughs> you can find out how to turn a, a set-in sleeve into a dolman sleeve. There are several YouTube videos. Or you can get Judy Kessinger's T. Is it called a T? Fit Nice T pattern. It's one pattern. You can make any top in the whole wide world with it. I've done a bunch of videos in the past. Um, but this one is... The, just the simplest in my opinion and so easy to make and fits everybody you just cut out the size that fits you I have to go I'll be back soon <laughs>